This is VMAX Scar and I am Stuart Gurr. Uh, today's video is going to be about how to modify your mini cylinder head. Here we've got a couple of heads. This one is a 12G940, uh, early casting because it's got the extended section around the thermostat housing. This is a 295 head, so small bore. The heads are pretty similar, restrictions are in the same place. Uh, you've got the raised valve guide boss on the inlet and exhaust ports. I don't know if you can see those there. And again on the 1300, this one is an early casting so it has less of a boss around here. But you can see that the boss is quite a major restriction in the exhaust port. So I'm going to take you through the process, show you some of the tools that I use and show you how to modify your own head if that's the sort of thing you're going to do. So first job, knock the valve guides out. So we've got a simple drift here. You can use a press or you can just use a hammer and drift like this. It's just turned down to fit inside the guides and we'll knock that out. Quick mention about safety, obviously don't attempt any of this if you're not happy and if you don't feel safe. Uh, when I'm doing the grinding I'll use these throwaway uh, earplugs just because they're hygienic. Uh, minimum requirement, a decent air mask to filter out the dust and some kind of eye protection. This is the kind of stuff I use. Uh, this is a 3M VersaFlow f -head mask and this is a battery filtration waste belt and it's fed with this hose to the back of the mask just so that you breathe some clear air while you're doing the grinding. These are some of the tools that I use for cylinder head grinding and polishing. Uh, the majority of the grinding work is done with this straight die grinder. This is a Swiss made Bosch straight die grinder, uh, 27,000 RPM that I'll use with these uh, mounted points or stones. These are aluminium oxide. As they wear down, you can still use them for different areas of the chamber or port. Now I'll be using a flexible drive with a foot pedal, variable speed, and a selection of felt bobs start off that shape with abrasive tape wrapped around them some coarse tape and some quite fine for the chamber you can do similar results with something like the dremel um, but obviously it takes a lot longer this is a, a lighter duty tool um, i'm not going to be using carbide burrs I tend to use those on slower spinning items. I know people do use them for head grinding but they can be pretty dangerous. I've got plenty of scars from using those previously. Let's get on to some grinding. This is where we're going to be doing the grinding. This is in my grinding shed. Keep the kind of dust out for the rest of the workshop. So I've got a dust extractor, a sort of an industrial hoover, a Festool one which I'll use with this adapter and it will just draw a lot of the sparks and the grit away as we start grinding. So we'll start after we've done an initial check of the head for cracks. Sometimes they can crack across here or in the center to this brass plug out to the chamber. It's on a visual inspection of this head and although it's quite corroded and messy looking it looks like a usable casting. Let's start some grinding. So we're going to be using uh, the one inch ball 
this is probably down to about 20 mil and we're going to start grinding this inlet port um, obviously there's quite a lot of health and safety about mounted points you should read whatever recommendations your grinder comes with about how far out to have a grinding point uh, I've obviously been doing this for quite a long time so I'm happy with this amount of overhang from the chuck but yeah check your grinders instructions if you're using a grinder if it's a much smaller diameter something like uh, you'd use in the Dremel you can get away with um, a lot more uh, length of um, stone sticking out of the chuck right let's grind this inlet bolt So that is the grinding process. I've just done one chamber. So that's the chamber work. It's freehand with a square kind of shaped stone. Stay away from the seats. Obviously I'll be counting the seats bigger, but 
you need to make sure that when you're grinding the chamber you're just going flat and don't slip down. You can use old valves to drop in here to protect the seat uh, until you're sure of what you're doing. So what I'm trying to do is just get a tubular shape to the port throats. Um, nothing major with this, this is just a road head, although it will have race valves in. Uh, but a basic chamber shape, smoothed out. Ports, not especially big, just squared up to the gasket shape. Uh, just lost the locating ring around the inlet port and smoothed it out to make it larger. This is the polishing process. So I'm using quite coarse uh, 80 grit tape wrapped around this piece of felt uh, on a long screw. And that's what I use to polish the ports. You don't want the ports too shiny. You want to keep the fuel and air mixed. And if you go for a really polished finish, uh, it can separate the fuel and the fuel kind of condenses on the walls of the port. So you want to keep them slightly rough. I find that this flexible drive set up um, will give me a smooth enough finish to blend all the grinding marks but good for airflow and good for fuel atomization. I'm going to use that on the inlet and the exhaust and the ports inlet and exhaust as well. So that is polished, you can see there's still a fairly rough finish on the ports but all of the original areas are smoothed out and ports are slightly bigger. On to the next stage.